Welcome back. It's been a long road, but I promise you we're almost to the end. There's only a few more sections I want to cover. Uh, but first, before we go any place else, I want to talk about tracking your email results. How do you know if everything we've shown you and everything I've gone over from uh, new, camp uh, new campaign structure to, uh, to promotional calendar planning to uh, email open optimization and email click optimization, how do you know if it's working? Well, before you can actually track your results and, and more importantly, before you can set realistic goals, we have to benchmark. Like, What's happening right now? What are your current results? Uh, now, a lot of people have uh, general numbers, but let's go over real quickly what you should be tracking and then how you're going to, to benchmark and how you're going to, to track moving forward. So we need to answer the question, how well is email working for you right now? All right, how is it working right now? We need to benchmark things like how big is your email list? And don't worry, I'm going to go through these, but in a separate video, I'm going to walk you through the email stats tracking sheet. It's a sheet that we had created that, that totals week by week, month by month, quarter by quarter, and year over year so that you can not only graph and chart uh, and benchmark uh, your results, but you can look at them uh, time period over time period. So I'll break down that video, but first in here, all I want you to do is understand conceptually what we're looking at benchmarking, what we need to benchmark now so that we can see growth, what we need to, to know or what we need to look at to know if we're getting better, right? If we're getting actually getting better results from our email. So first, how big is your list? Second, are you mailing the entire list? When you send a broadcast email, how many people are you mailing? Now, you might be uh, surprised to see that when you start going back and, and filling out and backdating this, this information, that you go large chunks of time without talking to potentially some of your best buyers. Now, hopefully that's not the case, but I can tell you when we first started doing this years ago and benchmarking uh, and filling this sheet out, it was absolutely the case for us. So if it is the case for you, don't feel bad. You're in really good company. Now, obviously, how many people are opening your emails? What's their average open rate? How many people are clicking your emails? Right? What's your average click-through rate? How many people unsubscribe? Right? How many people unsubscribe on your average email? How many people are complaining or marking your email spam? Okay, so that's what we're going to look at. But let's go into five steps to really benchmark e email performance. So the very first thing I want you to do is look back and chart every broadcast email for the past three, six, and 12 months. Now, I'll tell you, this is not a fun process. It's not even a little bit of a fun process. It's a lot of manual data entry. So if you have an intern, uh, I would suggest uh, get, grabbing their time, hopefully taking a, a, a maybe a week of their time, maybe more, depending on how much email you send to go in and, and actually fill this backdated data in so that you can start establishing benchmarks, right? What we, what we really want to know um, is what is, remember, what's your average email open rate? Before we, can, before we can set a target goal for what you want your email open rate to be, we have to know what it is now so we can figure out if that's a reasonable short-term or, or long-term goal. So looking back and charting every single broadcast email you, you or your company sent for the past 3, 6, 12 months. If, if you don't have a, an intern in-house, you may want to look at, at outsourcing this um, with a, with a, a simple uh, you know, data uh, entry gig, maybe use a local staffing company, but something to where you are not having to sit down and review it. Now, I'll tell you, if you have to be the one to do it, it's not the worst thing in the world. What you'll get is a real deep dive into the types of emails you've been sending, what's working, what's not, what people are, are engaging with, and what people are, are not engaging with, or what they're actually repelled by. So worst case scenario, if you have to do it yourself, you'll get a uh, real crash course in email performance. Uh, maybe find some things that you, you didn't realize that were right in front of your face. So step two, we're gonna establish averages. What's your average open rate? What's your average click-through rate? What's your average unsubscribe rate? What's your average complaint rate? And really, this one's pretty uh, passed over by most um, email performance benchmarks is what's your forward rate? How many people are actually forwarding your email on? How many people are saying, you should know this person? You know, this is great information. Remember, as we go through the customer journey, there's, there's taking someone from you know, a stranger to a friend, a friend to a buyer, a buyer to a multi-buyer, a multi-buyer to a, to a passive 
promoter and a passive promoter to an active promoter. Actively promoting by forwarding your emails to their friends, family, and coworkers um, is, is a pretty big deal. So it's something that you should track, benchmark, and set goals for. So when we're looking at this, obviously we want to see your open and click-through rates go up and your unsub and complaint rates go down. And, and these are the charts that the form that's included in the resources or assets of this particular module is going to chart out for you. All you have to do is enter in uh, some simple data daily and it's gonna start building this chart. And you'll start to see kind of where your average email lives. So step number three, identify irregularities. Any breakout, good or bad, right, on all of those. What we're looking for is, is breakout unsubscribes. What emails have you sent that had double the unsubscribes your average email sends? What emails have you sent that had uh, half of the unsubscribes that, you av that your average email get? What emails have you sent out that you've gotten double or triple your average open rates or your average click-through rates or your average forwards? We need to start plotting these. We need to start reverse engineering these. We need to start answering the question, why? Right? Why did that happen? Why did that work so much better? Or why did that perform so much worse than my average email? Some of these things we need to try to duplicate and others we need to try to avoid, right? So we're looking for patterns as we're doing this. As we're backdating, we're trying to see, is there a particular topic recently or historically that, you're, that is a hot button to your list? Is there a particular topic recently or historically that, that your list could care less about that you think and you can't figure out why they don't care about, right? Is there something that anytime you talk about it, you get crickets and something else that every time you talk about it, you get huge opens, huge click-through rates and hopefully huge sales. Uh, we need to figure that out. Is there a day or a time or a from? Is there some pattern that gets either positive or negative results? We have to start looking for these things. Now, we're gonna start evaluating this on a, on a weekly and monthly basis, but we need to start looking now um, not only for these things, but for seasonality, right? As we're going through, we're looking for seasonality as we, as we go uh, year over year. We need to say, uh, when does our, is there, a, is there a time of the year that historically uh, our email performance dips? Or is there a time of year where historically for our market, uh, our email list is, is highly engaged, right? Really highly engaged. And then finally, we want to set baseline numbers. Now, the, the, sheets that I'll get, um, uh, the sheets that you've been given in this training have calculations and formulas already entered. I'll show you how to edit those. It'll tell you daily whether um, your arrow's up or down, whether it's above, at or above your uh, baseline or at or below your baseline. So these are things that you're going to start looking at, but we need to look at baseline and then we need to look at goals. So once you, once you can determine your baseline numbers, where your average number's at now, we need to set some reasonable goals. And we'll dive into that uh, as we jump in and, and look at that sheet in the next video. All right, so real quick, uh, before, we, before we go to that video, I've got one more that we're gonna talk about, um, and it is really your KPIs and monitoring. So what are you gonna look at, and when are you gonna look at it? And that's what we'll talk about in the next video.